For more on the Virgin Galactic crash, Mitch Garber joins us now from Atlanta. He's worked on all kinds of disasters for the National Transportation Safety Board, including the 2003 Space Shuttle Columbia disaster. Mitch, thanks so much for joining us. How vital is uh, this information from this co-pilot who's recovering in the hospital? Well, you've got to understand that in this particular case, and this is a very unusual scenario for the NTSB because this was a test aircraft, a uh, test spacecraft, and has enormous amounts of information, both that are on board the aircraft uh, that, that will be uh, gathered in the coming days probably, and stuff that's actually being downloaded on a regular basis to the, to the Earth. So they've actually got a great deal of information, even video information that they've reviewed thus far, which puts them well ahead of the game in this sort of investigation. Obviously, they are going to want to talk to the, to the one surviving pilot, but already they've got more information, much more information than they typically would at this phase of an investigation. Mitch, you've done this uh, sort of work before, so, so give me uh, your thoughts. What's the toughest part of the investigation like this? Uh, pinpointing exactly what happened or trying to determine why it happened? Well, I mean, both of those are going to be critical issues. Uh, a lot of times you're trying to find out what, what actually is the, um, the, the single factor that caused the aircraft to break apart, but oftentimes the more important issue is why did that factor come to be? It's generally not just one thing, but a series of events that set the stage for this sort of catastrophic failure. And typically, how long will something like this take? Well, they're already wrapping up the on-scene uh, portion of the investigation. Uh, they've already collected a, a great deal of the wreckage, um, and the, it sounds like they're almost uh, finished with that phase of it. They've done interviews on scene. Um, so most of that is actually wrapping up now. The longer portion of this will be once they get back to Washington, D.C., and start analyzing all of this information that they've gathered. Uh, and that can often take up to a year. Let me ask you this, early speculation on the crash focused on the use of this different rocket fuel. Lots of questions at that first news conference on this particular subject. Is it easy to start down the wrong path and then you have to circle back and kind of check through other things? I mean, as an investigator, what do you do to try and narrow your search? Well, one of the things that happens is initially you're just trying to gather information. There's, there's a, an actual attempt not to do any analysis early in this investigation. And, and in fact, the, um, a lot of the briefings that the NTSB gave on this particular investigation specifically shied away from that. It's, it's not time yet for analysis. Now is the time to gather the information, look through it all, see what the information tells you, and then see how that guides the, uh, the ensuing investigation. Let me ask you about the 2003 Space Shuttle Columbia disaster. I know you worked on that. Um, how painstaking is this process? Can you just walk us through how difficult it is to kind of piece everything together and try and map backwards what happened? Well, you've got to remember the NTSB for the Columbia investigation was really an advise, an advisory capacity in this set circumstance because it's a primary aircraft accident. The NTSB is actually the lead organization for it, so they're going to follow their uh, um, protocol just like they would for any other uh, aviation accident, which means that they're going to put together these groups, they call them groups, um, with group chairmen, people who have particular expertise with the NTSB from uh, structures, from engines, from uh, um, operations, pilots who have a lot of experience, um, and then they'll gather expertise from other industry and, and outside experts, including the FAA, um, who will help them to sort of go through and cast a very wide net when they're gathering this factual information. Once the factual information is gathered, then they're going to take all that back, they're going to, they're going to comb through it, they're going to start to put together what they call factual reports. Each group chairman is going to be responsible for that, and each individual who's on that group, even the non-NTSB individuals on that group, will have an opportunity to comment and ensure that the factual material is, is correctly identified. Once that happens, then the doors sort of close to the non-NTSB investigators, and the NTSB does its analysis behind closed doors. Wow, it's a lot. Uh, Mitch Garber, thanks for walking us through all of this. Uh, certainly appreciate it. Mitch Garber joining us from Atlanta.